What's up guys? It's a spent man coming to you from the beautiful North Country. I'm out here in my cornfield and I'm going to be talking about lessons from the cornfield that I've learned this year and lessons that I've learned in selecting seed because, you know, if you're going to be um, a chieftain, if you're going to be a dynamo, if you're going to be a maverick, you always got to be um, learning. You always got to be a student of the game. Check out that beautiful North Country foliage in the background there. The joyous mounds of the North Country showing their colors. There we go, right there. You can see it. That's my view every day. Yeah, buddy. But the lessons from the cornfield. And one lesson that I learned this year or uh, from my seed selections that I made last year is that I selected all of my corn seed from the best ears when I was processing them after I'd harvest them. And what I found this year is that my seed selection was um, pushing toward having one large ear because I saved all the nicest, biggest, prettiest ears with eight rows after I had harvested. So if we check out the field a little bit, we'll notice that we're trending toward having one big, dominant, nice ear on there, right? You see that one hanging down, calling out to us? This one right here. So all throughout the field, we can see that my seed selection last year um, tended toward having one large ear on the plant, um, which is fine. It's okay. We want to have these big ears, these big lunkers, but we also want to have uh, plants that have two smaller, uh, two or more smaller serviceable ears on there. So this year, my lesson is to bring this guy out with me when I'm uh, in the field harvesting my good old Sharpie. And when I come up on a plant with uh, two or more serviceable ears, like this one right here, take out that trusty Sharpie and mark it with that S. Give it that S. Give it that Soilo right there, baby. So when I get it back, to the barn and in the winter when I'm going through and uh, cutting it down when we're grinding that corn into cornmeal and grits this winter I can see these S's on there and know uh, that's serviceable uh, that's for seed and I can start to move and influence the Abenaki corn toward uh, or away from having one dominant big ear on there because we don't want just the plants with one big ear. We need those plants that have two or three smaller ears on there too. We want it uh, to be diversified. We definitely don't want uh, the spent man's path um, seed selection of Abenaki flint corn to be one ear. That would be lame. That would be some like Italian Floriani Flint selection. And uh, we don't want that. We're in good old America. <laughs> but before we get into some mindless patriotism, we're going to stick to the lessons, the lessons of the cornfield. And just check out that beautiful North Country, man. And it's amazing. I've said it a million times making these videos where when you're growing the native food... Uh, the food that you harvest always mirrors the landscape. So our orange man squashes, they're orange, just like uh, the birch and the maple trees. Our corn, Abenaki flint corn, yellow, ruby gold, copper, just like that landscape back there. So it really is something to behold. But lessons from the cornfield. The number two lesson was believe in the cornfield, have faith. Um, 
this year I noticed that I was getting super stressed out because I was uh, really proud of myself because I was able to uh, figure out how to keep crows out of the cornfield after I planted it uh, using fishing line and putting the fishing line over the rows. So I was feeling really good about myself. And then what happened is that another pest, another dominant pest uh, arose that I didn't see coming. And it was the red winged blackbird and the songbirds. And they just decided that they really like to annihilate that emerging uh, corn germ, right? It tastes really good to them. And the songbirds, they operate purely on instinct, right? So, you know, you can do whatever you want. You can shoot guns at them or <laughs> try and scare them off, but they don't have the same intelligence levels uh, that crows have. So you can shoot a bunch of their buddies dead or whatever. A couple of minutes later, they just come back because it's all about instinct. And uh, my lesson to myself that I learned with that is just to have faith because the corn has been growing for thousands of years. The corn's made it through any sort of, uh, you know, bad weather patterns, um, any sort of pest attack. The corn has survived. That's why it's here for me to grow. So believe in it. Have faith in it and uh, don't doubt it because I was watching that corn getting annihilated by all sorts of birds and different pests too coming in and uh, you know it didn't really look that the, the plants look really spindly and really like wimpy almost like all the way through to July they're not even really up to your knee, right? Knee high by 4th of July is what all the conventional growers say. But um, what do you know? Uh, the end, late July, August, the plants just started taking off and grew, you know, feet in just like a couple of weeks. And so I was reminded again, don't get caught up in the societal noise that's just trying to pull everyone down have faith in the landscape have faith in nature have faith in the plants believe because <laughs> uh they you know they believe they operate that way so um i realized that this year and in the past i've always been going crazy trying to keep the pests out and starting to think maybe I won't have corn this year and what do you know year after year when I put my steps in when I do my due diligence I always have uh, I always have a really nice full corn field and this is going to be about like a thousand pounds of Abenaki Flint corn to bring in manually to hang uh, to grind in the winter time to sustain all the people that eat it with that beautiful natural organic native corn and that native corn field is never going to look like a genetically modified corn field it's never going to be uniform it's never going to look like a sea of tassels over a huge cornfield that Jesus could walk on or something. The plants, they're always going to have their own individuality and they're all going to be unique and they're not going to be uniform. And uh, that's beautiful. That's what uh, makes life interesting, right? It's not how equal we are and, uh, you know, our levels of equality it's how unique we are, how individuated we are, and that is reflected in the Abenaki cornfield. So that is my lesson this year. What I've learned from the corn this year is uh, mark your seed uh, in the field. 
Um, and believe in the corn because have faith in it because it's here. Check out some of those beautiful ears of corn. Abenaki Flint, baby, there's that gold one. There's a nice red one. And uh, that is it, guys. So, from the beautiful North Country, this has been The Spent Man. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.